new Minecraft Snapshot 22W44A is out. This experimental build is exciting because the developers listened to me. They took my suggestion and put it in the game. Am I a Minecraft god? Maybe, probably. Should you praise me? Absolutely. There's still not 100% evidence if they actually listen specifically to me, but I think they did. We're gonna cover all of the changes in this newest development build for Minecraft, but let's start off with what I said last week. Now, if we're in the mood, Minecraft developers, of adding more stuff to the creative menu, uh, why don't we add the debug stick? Where is that? Thing. There's a whole bunch of stuff that could be added, including command blocks, barrier blocks, light blocks, structure blocks, and I'm sure that I am missing a few. Uh, all of this would be great to add. I could see adding it to the redstone category. I don't think it needs its own tab. I'm happy with all, you know, with no more tabs. We don't need any more tabs, uh, but a like super creative menu, basically. All these things that are hidden behind commands would be awesome to get. And now, if you look in the redstone inventory, what do we find? Command blocks, structure blocks, jigsaw blocks, barrier blocks, light blocks, and the debug stick. I'm, I've, I feel heard. I feel, I'm giddy right now. This is crazy. There is a lot to cover in the snapshot, not just a big ego moment for me. So uh, let's dive into it. I think one of the most exciting things in this snapshot is that bookshelves, chiseled bookshelves specifically, now work with hoppers. So if I take one, two, and three books and put them in, the bookshelf will fill with those books. And then if I put a hopper below the bookshelf, then they will be removed. I can put a ton in there, and you'll notice that the inventory's not uh, changing at all. That's because this hopper down here is sucking them all out. They're, 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 it's going right through, and you don't see any UI update. But the moment I break that hopper, then it fills with those books. This works with the hopper on the top of the chiseled bookshelf or the sides. As you can see, oh, if I miss, that's uh, not as compelling. Uh, or the back of it as well. So, and I assume the front. We could <laughs> test that, but I don't see why that wouldn't work. Yeah, it worked. Okay, pretty cool. Now, let's also talk a little bit about something that was exciting last week was the monster spawner. This has changed behavior, which I really, really like. When you set down a monster spawner in the beginning, the, it's like a fresh monster spawner, it has no mob associated with the spawning, which is great. In the past, that used to be a pig, so it would like, you'd set it down and immediately pigs would pop out of there. So now there's no mob associated with it if you just pulled it out of uh, the inventory. And there's a few changes with these eggs as well, which I think is really great and it's like why hasn't why wasn't this a thing before it's kind of crazy actually that this didn't exist before now specifically the iron golem spawn egg the snow golem spawn egg and two eggs that are hidden by commands i know i just literally said like Maybe they shouldn't be you know, hidden by commands. I'm so excited this stuff isn't hidden by commands anymore. But uh, these are hidden by commands because they could like destroy player builds and stuff like that. That is the Ender Dragon spawn egg. Boop. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. That looks really, really cool. I love the look of that. And the Wither spawn egg. So now, because these things didn't have spawn eggs before, now you can use the same behavior that we could do before with the spawners and now add them, add these creatures to a spawner. So iron golems will now spawn at this spawner or snow golems will now spawn at this spawner. That is really, really cool. I'm really glad that they added these extra egg, that was like we had a way to get it, where you could just summon command or, whatever, but now it makes it a lot easier to actually use this in using the creative menu uh, without needing to go into commands. Now, I, of course, want to spawn in an Ender Dragon. Uh, pretty derpy, 
Uh, whenever you don't use a proper command, the Ender Dragon is derpy like that, and uh, it just won't work. Uh, it's something to do with the end, I'm not exactly sure. So he's just derping out right there. Actually, it looks like he's smarter than he used to be. He used to literally just like derp there. And like, if I just use like summon, Ender Dragon, is this guy, is he derpy too? Or is he gonna eventually start moving? Looks like he's kind of moving around. Oh my gosh, maybe they stopped the derp. Okay, well, there you go. Those things can go away now. now let's check out this wither. <laughs> well, that just works as you'd expect. Okay, that's pretty cool. And let's kill him because he is <clears throat> annoying. Another thing that I want to point out is that the uh, interface or the, the look of the spawner has changed. Uh, whenever there's nothing inside of it and nothing that it can spawn, it does not emit the fire particles, which uh, really this wasn't a state that was like around before that I had ever seen. Maybe you could get it with commands, but there's no fire particles. And then the moment you add something that can be spawned there, that is when you get those fire particles. Another nice thing is that if you use, I assume here, let's try this, there we go. Uh, you can use on Java edition, a pick block that includes the NBT data. You have to hold down control on your keyboard and then use your pick block key. But as you can see, the NBT data is on here and that's why it didn't stack with the normal monster spawner that has nothing in it. And it shows even in the text what that block, what that spawner is. So. If I was to do this with a snow golem, do the same thing. I'm holding down control and my pick block key. It has put another spawner. You can see that that is a snow golem. And then we have an iron golem and then we have nothing. If you didn't know this trick. It can be do done with like anything. So I could write down high on the sign, make sure that I delete the sign from my inventory, hold down control, pick block. I have a sign with NVT data. Now it doesn't have that nice feature of saying what that data is, but when I put down the sign, it says hi on it. So you can use this with chests. You can use it now with spawners. Uh, I love that addition. They mentioned in their change log that there have been some changes to the creative menu once again, and that hopefully this is the last time. So we may be seeing a more defined, like this was like the last, hopefully until next week changes everything. But uh, a few things uh, have been added in here into redstone. We have barrels and chests, cauldrons and furnaces, which I guess can be all like compared and stuff. So they're redstone. Over in the functional blocks, we have bees nests and chain added. In building blocks, we also have chain. So now it's in functional and building. And we also got the block of amethyst. In crafting, we have the ancient debris added. And there's been a few things that have been rearranged and reordered, including some of the tabs. Bamboo mosaic can now be used as a fuel source in a furnace, which makes a lot of sense because it's basically wood. It's just a fancy type of wood. They have updated the sounds so that you will have the normal stepping sounds through some blocks, which was apparently like almost like a bug. Uh, and then also on top of some other blocks. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. There is a new game rule, uh, block explosion drop decay. And then this explosion drop decay uh, part of this game rule will also exist for mobs and TNT. So uh, I think that was a little confusing. So we got block explosion, then we have TNT explosion, and then we have mob explosion, uh, drop decay. So uh, the idea is that explosion drop decay is how many blocks will just disappear whenever something explodes or breaks or uh, goes off. So you can think of it, let's think of it uh, specifically with the TNT explosion drop decay. So recently this was made so that when TNT's, uh, TNT blocks explode, every single block is dropped. So the drop decay would be set to false because there is no decay. We are not decaying away at the world. So it's set to false. If you were to set this to true, then some of the blocks that were broken when the TNT explodes would be gone forever. They would not drop a uh, an entity for you to pick up as the player. By default, the game sets the TNT explosion decay to false, but then it sets the mob explosion decay to true and same thing for the 
block explosion decay to true, which means that if creepers and or blocks explode, I'm not sure what would explode. Maybe, I guess, uh, like in crystals, beds, respawn anchors, that sort of thing, that anything that explodes that's not TNT, uh, that could take out uh, loot that uh, would never come back. New game rule, snow accumulation height. So whenever it is snowing, what will be applied to a block? So up here on this mountaintop where it is snowing, I've turned on rain, uh, which is snow when you're cold. <laughs> uh, this will accumulate by default one layer of snow over time. Uh, obviously it's not, oh, there we go, we got one. We got one right there, holy moly. So you can actually set this game rule to zero if you do not want snow to accumulate on any blocks at all. This will stop that layer of snow spawning in, or you could set it all the way up to eight, which is an entire block. So you maybe just saw just right in front of our eyes that it uh, accumulated. Um, and I assume if it's set to eight, that means that it could make a full block and then make another block and then another block. Like it would just keep going. It would just it'd never stop. Your snow would just continue to build and build and build and build and build. And soon you would have a glacier and uh, you'd have a lot of snow. A lot, a lot of snow at that point. By default, it is set to one. So I can set this to two. And then I can also change the random truck speed like up a bit. And it should, I hope, this is a random tick speed activated event. It doesn't look, it does not look like it is. Um, so uh, this could accumulate up to two layers of snow. And remember, a layer of snow is two pixels. So you can kind of see here, let's look, uh, using this plank as a guide, you can see that that is two pixels high. And that is why eight is the max, because one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you have a full block. Now, now that this is a full block, can this itself get snow on it? That's what I think. And then it would just keep growing. It could just keep growing. We're definitely getting to some areas that have two high now that I changed the game mode. That is one, that is two. So you can see all of these, that's too high there. The, ga the, 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 ga the game rule is working. Good job, developers. You you made it work. Seems a little patronizing. Anyway, so uh, let's uh, switch to, uh, I want the weather to stop. I swear that there is a Minecraft developer watching my videos because I literally just covered some TikToks that this next thing is not true. And now it is true. It's now actually in the game. One of the TikToks that I looked at was how to make a lava source block. Normally with water, right? You can create a water source uh, where I only put down two buckets of water, but now we have four water sources because if there's an adjacent water source, it will make flowing water become a source of water. And you can't do that with lava. Lava doesn't work that way until now. So now there is a new game rule and lava source conversion exists. So I could set this to true and hopefully, oh my God, we're burning down the forest. Okay, right, got rid of that. Uh, if I put this down, will it make a lot? Oh, it does. Wow. That is that is like mind blowing right there. That is really really cool. Okay, we're gonna test. We're gonna test. We're gonna put a canary in the coal mine, as they say. We're gonna see if any uh, Mojang developers are actually watching. Uh, lava buckets should also be in combat because that is used heavily in combat situations. So can we just add a lava bucket in here? I think it should go right before the arrows, uh, right after the uh, crossbow. <laughs> Okay, I'm I have uh, I'm, I'm getting a big head now. My ego is just way too inflated So this means with the lava source uh, option available You can create a source of lava just like you can create a water source That is really really cool. So by default lava source conversion is set to false but water source conversion is set to true. Those are your default game modes. And now that it's set to false, sorry, lava, but you do not create lava sources anymore. Final game rule is global sound events, which is uh, what happens when, say, a 
uh, Wither is spawned into the world or someone defeats the Ender Dragon, where literally everyone in the entire world, doesn't matter what dimension, you can hear that thing happen. Uh, you can now set that to true or false. The default is true, but if you have a big server where people are spawning withers all the time to get with to get you know whatever stars wither stars, uh, then nether stars I should say, uh, then you can turn that to false, and that just won't annoy the rest of the server. Finally, in the bug fix category, I'm not going to cover a lot of stuff, but some things that uh, stood out is that camels cannot pathfind uh, over one and a half tall blocks, uh, which is funny and clever because camels can just walk over one and a half tall blocks. And so I guess they're the only mob that can now pathfind over those because they're not an obstacle. The bamboo fence gate texture uh, was fixed, which I made fun of a lot last week. I also uh, crashed my game multiple times when I was reporting players because if you hit escape while in the draft thing, it just crashed the whole game. That's been fixed. And that is basically everything in 22W44A. Hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. I am currently making videos about all of the snapshots and development builds around Minecraft. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video. Leaving a like and a comment also helps me out a ton. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.